आपको is still here wo it's not going anywhere the way it looks now the second wave is here or second wave be you know it looks very dangerous right now a lot of uh, cases are up especially the whole uh, you can say canada right now right now, especially alberta we are, like our numbers are beating everyone we are kind of the ground zero for uh, corona virus these days so hopefully you doing your part please if you don't know agar aapko bahar nahi jana hai don't go anywhere now. uh please use your mask or so stay 2 meters apart किसी को इनवाइट ना करें अपने घर में और आप खुद भी ना जाए किसी घर में एटलीस्ट फॉर नेक्स्ट टू टू थ्री वीक्स ताकि यू नो वी कैन ब्रिंग द नंबर्स डाउन इट्स गेटिंग यू नो आई थिंक अगर हम अभी अगर कुछ नहीं करेंगे सो नेक्स्ट टू वीक्स लेटर विल हैव अ मोर रिस्ट्रिक्शन सो आई थिंक देन ऑफ कोर्स क्रिसमस भी आ रहे हॉलीडेज आर कमिंग सो वी डोंट वॉन्ट टेक दैट kind of the enjoyment away from the festival from the from the festival so let's hope we can do our part and we can kill this virus or at least slow it down a little bit so at least we can enjoy a little bit here and there so let me get to my co-host salma ji she is waiting backstage hello salma ji ji assalam alaikum main gali mada dada aap kaise ho jalal kya haal hai bas theek hai ji aap kaisi hai sab khairiyat hai ye upar wali ki dua hai yes everybody is healthy yeah mm-hmm. what you are talking about is little scary right now but we have to be careful for us and for others so please um bahut khayal rakhiye aur jaise ke aap logon ko kaha gaya hai usi tarah kariye to we together united we can do something kyunki um this as jalal said this corona is not going anywhere so um let's see today what dr navin say has yeah. to say about it so yeah so yeah. you know after uh, some you know i think about 3 4 days ago i was yeah uh, just listening to other radio station and they were talking uh, canada doesn't uh, like uh, they won't produce or they won't manufacture any vaccines yeah to wo bahar se laenge but the but the countries jaise maine kaha tha i think it was in my post apna uh, facebook post as well like uh, developing countries mexico yeah. india indonesia they they are manufacturing so why not us humme itni kya kharabi hai so i didn't yeah. think any other name except except dr navid sayed yeah. because yeah. he is a world renowned art uh, scientist yeah. and i think it's an honor for for calgary to be you know he's you know like he's in our city and yeah. then whenever whenever we we'll ask him he always comes to our show as well then you know That's i think right. this is one of those days but yeah. he's got a big kind of a but kind of introduction to to navid bhai you know i'm going to get you on then maybe you can talk about it because i think there's going to be uh, at the starting point uh, for us so, so let me add him on the screen okay salam alaikum navid bhai assalam alaikum salam alaikum how are you kya we are fine how are you alhamdulillah so good to see you you're to my favorite people you remember yeah, thank you thank I, you i think yeah. last time when i came on your show we were supposed to do 20 minutes but you know an hour 20 minute i was still there yeah. <laughs> and you were so, so wonderful and kind and gracious hosts i love your program and what you do actually is highly commendable may you be blessed so thank you so much thank you i mean aapki bahut pyari baatein hain aur aap we can just sit and talk to you for hours hum you have so much knowledge so much to to give us to the world to us so that's why now this corona as you know is not going anywhere so first we would like uh, to everybody you, everybody knows you but thoda bahut phir bhi batate chale to acha rahega apne bare mein so actually you know I- um thank you again for the opportunity to be on your show like i said you are um you know two beautiful wonderful uh, people and your thank program you. is watched all over the world thank um you. i think my introduction is really not that important it's not <laughs> very necessary um, i am a you know also not an expert in the vaccine or infectious diseases uh-huh. but i think um you know um my area of specialization is brain and neurosciences okay. um, but you know um because of the lockdown we have been reading so much okay. that i think um 
I was saying to Jalal Bhai earlier that, um, uh, you know, um, normally when we are contained at home, हमारी को बात घर में सुनता ही नहीं है बेगम भी नहीं सुनती तो हम तो बोल लेते हैं राइट and we hope that somebody will listen so hopefully you know what we are going to talk today is that many people will listen to right. and you're absolutely right so i'm a professor at the coming school of medicine right. um, and my area of specialization is is neuroscience i was the scientific director for uh, hodgkins brain institute also five years i was scientific director for alberta children hospital research institute and right. um, the department head for 10 years so i've done a lot of in you know administrative work but my area of specialization is in the brain sciences yeah. and my lab is has been involved in developing novel technology especially the brain chip interfacing because if your brain gets damaged either due to stroke trauma injury because a natural replacement doesn't occur what yeah. we are trying to do is to develop technology that would allow us to marry brain cells with the semiconductor chip and uh -huh. as a result we might be able to actually regain that lost brain function so that's really um the area of my specialization is right. but i think today we will talk about something different so yeah so yeah, that's right so, ahead, so you let's uh, yeah let's talk about you know start from the vaccination so uh -huh. you know I was just talking to salwaji and of course you know we're so we're talk to you as well now with by last Thursday when i listened on like you know on the radio developing countries like india indonesia mexico and there are some others name so they will get the vaccine before canada so they are so they are talking up like like approximately after 2.5 billion people get their vaccination then canada will, so then canada's number will come and why because we are not manufacturing we will buy from the pfizer or the moderna yeah so so you are scientists you work in the lab you know each and every day and i think we have enough scientists here we have enough talent here how come we are not or like you know, like you know, are we capable of producing or manufacturing vaccination doesn't matter about to the covid 19 but like you know like you know like you know, any vaccination any vaccine uh -huh. so actually you know you're um, you're very insightful and thoughtful and i think for you to really um um bring this discussion and topic it's really a very very important most people yeah. don't ask that question you know we have become so kind of used to getting things from across the border we say yeah. well let's do it we will use yeah. it but you know when something like covid when it came it has shaken up not only these big powers and brought them to the knees and exposed their vulnerability but it also exposed our vulnerability even further and yeah. the third country that you were talking about developing countries even in worse shape you know uh -huh. they are at the bottom of the food chain so i think this is a really a major shock and um, and the shock in a sense that you know the world was coming together and we were doing things together and we did not feel need to really recapitulate or develop small technologies at home so we you know we were going through a global village but now after covid we have started to become deglobalized we are uh -huh. becoming deurbanized so yeah. the world is really all in it for themselves the the trend of nationalism is really increasing in countries and um, such as united states you know you have brexit and britain they want to do it for themselves then trump wanted to put sanctions in china and uh -huh. they were really thinking about america first i think we should have gotten a wake up call 2 3 years ago yeah but if something like this comes are we really prepared but unfortunately we are not so so there is a long history and i'll walk you through i think the best thing is maybe if i could share my screen what i will do yes. is that yeah I'll sure give your audience uh, maybe a little bit of scientific but some uh, common lay person's perspective uh -huh. as why is it that we are in such a precarious situation that we are so yeah. let me share my, my screen and we could um talk about this yeah can you see my screen yeah we do okay so you know this little uh, gizmo <laughs> which is a coronavirus right um, it comes the word comes from crown so it actually wears a crown over his head right. and it, it is that this particular virus is um, is you know people say it has come from bat uh -huh. now it has an incredible immune system so uh -huh. um, and so to stay in bat this virus has to become 
equally smart to become uh -huh. very adaptive and um, so he can you know whatever bad threw at him to get rid of him and um, it adopted itself to really become resilient and modified it so it's a very very rapidly fast adapting virus and because bat has a very very um, intense immune system this virus has to survive and in order to survive in the bat it also became very very clever and mm. And what yeah. happens is the bat, when bat is flying, bat's body temperature goes up to 41 to 42 degrees. So this virus has also adopted to stay in that high temperature. So, you know, when our body uh, creates fever, it really makes the environment inhospitable for these bacteria and viruses because they are used to growing at 37 degrees, which is our body temperature. So uh -huh. when our body raises the temperature, um, to make it really a very unfriendly environment for these viruses. This guy, this little gizmo, is so crafty that it has come from bats, so it's used to that, and no problem. It walks around, and it, and you can also see it has 12 spikes. So those spikes yeah. are like harpoons, and these harpoons dig right into our lungs uh, cells, uh, right yeah. in there. And, and so normally our body will recognize them as an intruder and they get alerted, alarm, and the body's immune system comes alive to tackle it. But you know what this virus has done? It has coated those spikes with carbohydrates or sugar molecules. So when it is coated with sugar molecules, it becomes like a gulab jamun, right? Uh -huh. So the immune system feels like, oh, it's no big deal. It's a, one of the friendly guy. It's not a nasty bug or anything. And then what happens is this gives this virus almost a few days, five days, six days to dig deeper and deeper and deeper. And then our immune system say, whoa, something wow. has just escaped our radar. It went below the radar like a stealth bomber. And when it came, it is really too late. So what happens uh -huh. then is that our immune system sometimes overreacts. And when it overreacts, it sends those um, extra um, cytokines, the immune cells, to the site where the virus is. But in so doing, it actually has a friendly fire and it causes a lot of collateral damage and it damages our own body. So the blood vessels where these um, uh, cytokines storm and, and really get into, and it causes the, you know, our blood vessels to clog um, and they rupture, we get hemorrhage in the brain and heart as well in other places. So this is really a nasty, nasty, nasty bug and which has really modified itself. And it came um, not from a lab. This is what many people think that yeah. somebody, you know, made it and set it free. Yeah. This did not be really ma made because it's a billions of years of evolution through which this virus has adopted itself. So. You know, it is extremely uh, difficult um, to really handle this uh, particular virus. Um, so I think it's important to understand um, what these viruses and these kinds of things do. So what I'm going to do today is really talk to you about, you know, um, how do we go about making vaccines um, against these kinds of, um, you know, of, and bugs, viruses, um, and how do we really handle and what what will happen um, if we do get vaccines? Um, there is another issue is that, um, you know, if Canada gets vaccines, we get all inoculated. There is a huge population of you know, anti-vaxxers who will not take it. Yeah. So, you know, what will happen in that case? So we will go through it. Um, but I want to really give a shock to people who don't listen, you know. Um, we have been yelling and shouting at people, yeah. social distancing. We are asking people to really uh, refrain from, you know, your social yeah. activities. Let me get my pointer so I could actually point it. Um, so we have been um, scientists, doctors, everybody is saying that, yes, 94 percent people come out, you know, OK. Um, it doesn't affect them that much. But once you actually get affected, now this picture, these are pictures of the lungs of those yeah. people who died. This is one of the lady who was 50 years of age. And you can see these, these are the alveoli. These are the sacs through which we breathe. You know, our lung exchanges oxygen with our blood and the blood systems. So these need to be really healthy. So what this virus does is that it starts to clog these little um, outlets through which we breathe and we exchange our oxygen and gases. 
And yeah. these gets plugged. When they get plugged, we actually have really difficulty breathing. So our lungs begin to, um, you know, give in. Um, and uh, we cannot, our oxygen level drops. We go into all kinds of trouble. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, this uh, normally pneumonia will fill it up with water we can drain. But when they plug in deeper, uh, these little um, alveoli, the, the little opening through which we breathe, it becomes really, really hard to get rid of this um, this blockage. And the uh -huh. mucus is really thick, even if you try to clear it. And so, you know, it causes enormous damage. But, you know, I also would like to warn people because this is really the idea of your pro program is that the government has put policies. Uh, healthcare systems is really uh, at the brink of collapse. We need to do our part of social distancing. And uh -huh. in our community, especially, we think that socializing is more important than anything else. We end up infecting another person, and then we actually um, make them incapacitated. So if you, if I had these kinds of lungs and, and I recovered, you know, in being in the intensive care for two, three weeks, I will never be normal. Even if I am asymptomatic, yeah. I will not be normal because these um, plug-in holes are often with me for the rest of my life. Yeah. So, you know, it will incapacitate my activity. If I was running yeah. an Olympic or playing sports, I will have really difficulty for life. So, again, mm -hmm. I like to really urge people to please, please uh, obey all the social distancing rules, wear masks, wash your hands, and be vigilant about these kinds of things. So what happens is that we did not know much about this virus. In addition to lung impact, you know, imagine that you are going in a park and all of a sudden somebody comes in front of you and they pull a gun. And now you know that the threat is real, it's, it's definitive and it's immediate, it's right in front of you. Your body will, uh, your brain will allow you to enact three different things. Either you'll fight, you will flight, run away, or you will freeze at the moment. And the freeze uh -huh. is also a part of our survival strategy. So you can see what your brain will do. But what happens is in this particular case, poor penguin saw the seal coming and it was too late for it and it gets actually eaten. But in case of COVID-19, we don't know, still don't know much about this virus. So it is just like this penguin and this penguin is just like us walking in a park where we have no idea where the threat or attack is going to come. We are constantly in a state of anxiety and panic. And then what this does is that this ice cutter, the ship is coming towards it and it has no idea what this is, what is it going to do, what will happen. I think this anxiety also causes, you know, tremendous damage to our brain. It creates unpleasant and vague apprehension and sensations. And I think people also need to be vigilant and be, um, you know, um, kind of concerned about those people, um, you know, who are in a constant state of anxiety and fear. So anxiety will, you know, alter our feelings. We feel down. We feel that it's not worth living. Going to work is not good. It alters our behavior. So, you know, we are really down all the time, which will and create the apprehension even more, our thoughts will change, and this vicious cycle really comes together. So I would like to tell people that this is not the first time that we have dealt with something like this. This won't be the last time. We yeah. have fought it off before, we will fight it. So, you know, get your thoughts in order, control your feelings, and alter your behavior as if you really you are living, um, you know, the life uh, life again. So to give you your audience an idea, of vaccines, um, you know, um, let me stop this so I could, can you see me as well on the screen or is it just? Yeah. Yes, no, yeah. no, no, we can, no, see no, we you. can see you. Okay, so, you know, imagine that this is coronavirus, this is the virus and any virus. So what happens with this is that this virus or, or a bacteria has two properties. One of it property is pathogenicity, meaning that its ability to produce disease. So, ye jab bhi hamare jis me daakhil hoga, ye hamen nuksan pachayega, ye bimari ko create karega, tissue ko damage karega, aur hamari health ko damage karega. Iski jo dusri property hai, the second property it has is its antigenicity, meaning that whenever it enters our body, body recognizes this as a as a threat, as an antigen. 
and body then makes antibodies against this particular um, enemy or, or intruder. And when it makes the antibody, whenever this whole thing comes together into our body, our body has already made antibodies against this. And then what it does is that it neutralizes this virus and, and it takes away its ability to produce disease. So one is the ability to produce disease. The other is the ability to stimulate the production of antibody, which is our immune system, to be able to prepare and neutralize its, um, its ability to produce disease. So what most vaccines, the way they are produced, is in such a way that we take the same bug, same virus, but we take away its ability to produce disease. In other words, if this nib part was the nasty part that would puncture me, we will heat it up and we will inactivate this particular part, only this part that is the disease producing one. And as a result, what happens is that we neutralize. And these antibodies that it can now stimulate in our body will run around for quite some time, lifelong immunity that we have for smallpox and other things. And whenever we are attacked, our body is ready. The antibodies are already there. They will immediately neutralize it and, and destroy it and kill it. So this is really how, in a simplistic term, these um, you know, uh, vaccines are developed. Vaccine is the same bug. We take that bug, we take away its ability to produce disease. And then what happens is that what the product we get out of this in other words, ye langda lula virus, coronavirus ki aapne do char taange tod di, ab ye hamare jisme dig in nahi kar sakta. To jab ye dig in nahi kar sakta, to it actually cannot stay um, or cause damage to the body. So yeah. these vaccines are produced in a similar way, whereby we will take that particular um, inactivated virus or even the active virus, we can inject it in an animal where it doesn't produce disease. So, for example, in bat, this virus doesn't produce any disease. Uh -huh. So when it is injected in um, in an in a animal, for example, a cow or a chicken or a rabbit, they will produce, they will not get sick because this virus doesn't affect them the same way that it affects us. So they will produce antibodies. We can then take those antibodies and then we can actually use it for our own vaccination purpose. So there are many different ways to make vaccines. So vaccines um, are actually made that way. <clears throat> so what happens in the real world is, that, you know, when you think about vaccine uh, manufacturing project could actually take anywhere between 12 to 36 months. And that is if we put everything into this. I mean, we still have not developed, you know, uh, vaccines for, um, you know, Ebola. We still have not per been able to produce vaccines um, for, for example, uh, HIV. We still have not been able to produce vaccine, effective vaccines for even common cold. Those vaccines that we get, you know, um, shots get every year, they're only 50% efficacious. So it is really a tough, tough business. So vaccines, they are, as I said, they are complex biological products and they have very long manufacturing and control processes. There are quality control processes because you don't want to really produce more complications or a vaccine that could hurt, you know, a lung failure, heart failure. Um, and, you know, and so there are really 70% of the manufacturing time is in the quality control and validation of these vaccines and make sure that they are actually not harmful to us. So quality insurance, you know, ensures that the vaccines are produced uh, following the highest standards and, and, and all components, manufacturing steps, control tests are done, including reagents and standards. So everything that has been used to prepare a vaccine is tested individually for its side effects or its effects. So when you look at this particular, um, um, to my left and probably to your right, when you think about the raw material that you have to receive, so let's say we start at two weeks on an average, and but it can actually um, you know, vary for months um, uh, and even years. So the raw materials um, are either used in key production steps such as fermentation and the purification or a, 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 as an integral part of the vaccine. So up to 160 raw material could be used to produce some vaccine. So you can imagine that this many things have to be there 
tested individually to make sure that the vaccine that we, they will be part of will not harm any harm to us. So once we have really prepared the raw material, we will go into active ingredient, ingredient manufacturing, and this could take 12 months. So the generation of antigen, this is what I talked about, the active ingredient, the most critical step in the production of high quality um, and safe and, and effective vaccine. From that step, then we move on to coupling and formulation. Now, now this is relatively simple process. It can really take maybe two to three weeks during the, the formulation. The antigen is coupled with stabilizer. Now, because these antigens that we have developed, you know, for example, our body would have, would have developed, um, you know, it needs to be stabilized and preserved uh, with adjuvants to enhance the immune, uh, immune response and it facilitates vaccines administration and ensure vaccine stability um, in, in time. Then we do the filling process and that really takes eight months. So vaccines are filled aseptically in a viral or a syringe to ensure that they are sterile, they don't get contaminated. <clears throat> the viral, these vials are then closed using sterile stoppers um, and crimped to maintain sterility. And, and, and they are unstable liquid vaccines, uh, lengthwise. So we actually make sure that they are protected and preserved. So this is step from the filling of vaccine in the bottle. Then we go through packaging and the packaging could take 18 weeks and is packaged. Then it will be shipped to different places in different countries. That takes, you know, quite considerable time. But the important thing is that some of these vaccines, they have to be normally, they have to be kept at you know, anywhere between plus two to plus eight degrees. But the vaccines that the coronavirus, um, uh, they have produced for coronavirus, that has never ever been produced before because they are mRNA special uh, vaccines. They don't rely on the bug per se, but only the genetic plan. And I will walk you through quickly for understanding. And so um, that particular coronavirus vaccine would need to be kept at minus 80 freezers. And that will also be an issue when we actually finally get. And then the distribution step where it gets really distributed to different places. So you can see the steps that a normal vaccine will require for us to go through. Um, and then, you know, from its inception, from raw material to be able to go uh, to distribution. Now what happens is that in case of coronavirus, because we don't have enough raw material, um, you know, that many um, bugs have to be grown. The viruses have to be grown in the culture. We, in the laboratory, we extract them. Then we try to really do things with them and take the process. And because it is such a nasty virus, we need to find something different. So what have these companies that I will talk about have done is that they have taken the coronavirus. So the scientists, you know, synthetically, they created the genetic code. So once we sequenced the whole thing, we knew the genetic code, which is used by coronavirus to produce infectious proteins. So these proteins that it produces are the one that cause the infection. So what we do is that we actually genetically engineer this in the laboratory. Then we code it, you know, provide it in a fatty protective coatings. We inject it into the body. And then this code tricks our body to make antibodies against this particular bug or this virus. And then the fourth step is that our immune system, it detects these viral proteins and produces defense response. And, and, uh, and if a patient encounters, then the coronavirus, the T cells, the antibodies are already primed to fight it off. So this is really our reserve army that is on 24 hour then alert. As soon as an attack comes, they are really gunning and they go out and these antibodies and T cells will go and they take this virus and completely neutralize it and take it down. So this has never been done. And I think this is one of the reasons that we have made such a fast progress in terms of getting to the vaccine um, because these mRNA based vaccines have never been produced before. So there are two major players in uh, right now in the run. And one is the Oxford University, which is working with AstraZeneca. Um, and when they said that if they produce this, it will be first really um, given 
uh, as a test to Italy. That's where the deal was made. And then to the North America and other places. Then Pfizer is also working with um, BioNTech. This is a German company. And the interesting thing is actually last year around the very same time, um, I um, you know, um, shared a podium with the person who owns this company. He is a brilliant Turkish scientist working in Germany now. And he was also given uh, Mustafa Price as well. So we spoke at the same, uh, same um, place. So it's a kind of a small world. So this is the German based company working with Pfizer. So they, their vaccine, they claim is 90% effective in preventing COVID-19 in those, um, you know, without prior evidence of infection. So they uh, will claim that, uh, you know, those people who have not uh, been exposed to coronavirus before, you know, they do the antigen test, get a clean person. And um, when they actually um, have been subsequently attacked by COVID-19, they found that 90% of them were protected. So the first, um, you know, in trim analysis of phase three clinical trial, um, uh, they confirmed that 94 cases um, out of 43,533 who participated in the process, they were protected. Um, and, um, uh, you know, um, and, and they were also from diverse background, elderly, young, Asian, blacks, and, you know, and Anglo and all different kinds of people. They had different backgrounds. So it's not that the virus or this particular vaccine is only effective on young people or the elderly. So there were no serious um, safety concern, <clears throat> but the data continues to be assessed as we speak. Um, and so this is really one of the important things to, to really remember. How many can they produce? 1.3 billion at the end of next year. They could produce this many, but the world, we have population is 7 billion. What will happen to the rest? Others companies have to really chip in. Oxford also is uh, planning to actually have their vaccine come before Christmas, but you know, it has strong immune response. It looks really good in the elderly, but it has had a few uh, drawback that I wouldn't go into, into detail. But then, you know, some of the countries like China or Russia, they do challenge trials. So instead of really, um, you know, waiting for people to get infected, they deliberately infect people. So this is a challenge trial where we take an ordinary person, we expose them to coronavirus, and, and before that, you have given them your vaccine and to ask the question whether it really happens. So these are controversials, um, but, you know, uh, they could be really much more faster than the conventional way of making uh, making these vaccines. So this is really the take home is that the vaccine is on its way. <clears throat> but the question that you asked earlier, yeah. um, both of you, um, that Canada and its vaccine predicament, why is it that the country such as a rich country like Canada, we uh -huh. don't have really a vaccine plan? So, you know, <clears throat> I can tell you, we used to have a reasonable vaccine development plan about 50 years ago, but we uh -huh. don't have anything anymore. There were two companies. One was the, the Connaught lab in uh, Toronto, and it used to produce insulin, and it also used to produce <clears throat> vaccines for diphtheria and polio. And these <clears throat> were really, so this particular uh, lab that produced this uh, vac these vaccines and they had the ability to produce vaccine was sold to Sanofi, which is a pasture, which is a French company. So we lost that um, vaccine, <clears throat> that company. The other one was the, the Armand Frepper lab in Montreal. It used to produce TB vaccines, but it also got sold to GlaxoSmithKline UK. Why? Because these two <clears throat> particular um, labs that were producing vaccines, they had come out of university settings. <clears throat> so because they were paying university heavy overheads, their business model was really not very good. And so the, the business proposition was really bad. And as a result, the Canadian government under I know, Prime Minister Maroney, the conservative government, the privatization plan actually opened the door for the departure of these companies. And, and so both of these companies that had credible vaccine production in Canada were sold out to overseas to other companies. And as a result, they no longer produce 
or if they produce, they produce very little of those vaccines, which are also not, not effective. So now what? What do we do? Mm -hmm. Now, Canada has really uh, a purchase agreement with both U.S. and uh, European Union companies. And um, what they uh, make would have to be approved by. So even if they make the antibodies, we have the agreement, but Health Canada still has to really approve this before it is made to, available to Canadian. So Health Canada has ordered 414 million doses of COVID-19 from seven different companies. But you know, we would really need seven million because one dose of a particular vaccine is not effective, even for the best vaccines that are coming in the market. So 20 day gaps, you will have to be re-inoculated. So we need really 17 million doses. So two Canadian companies uh, and that are, you know, one is in Quebec, the Medicago, and then the YO Interact, the Saskatchewan's, they are working on generating our local vaccines. But even if they succeed in producing something which is credible, we still do not have in Canada the ability to package them and bottle them and send them. And I told you that is also a very laborious, time consuming and very really um, a process which is quite tough. So we don't have, you know, um, experimental vaccine production in Canada, facility in Canada. Even if we did, we don't have the packaging um, information or the packaging and processing, bottling and, and the shipping uh, processes here in Canada. And, and this is one of the reasons that we actually lagging behind. You know, we should have really um, done this way back, but hindsight is again 2020. You know, the government thinks of very short election cycles, four year cycles. Uh -huh. They don't really think in terms of long term. Yeah. So it's really a shame that if we yeah. do learn lessons, this is not the first time. I can tell you now, even in your program, there will be COVID 21 coming yeah. pretty soon. Yeah. So Whoa. NRC in Montreal was given, you know, $44 million, but we are way behind the rest of the world. So there you have it. I think, you know, this really gives you some idea as to what really is the, the reason behind um, that we do not have the vaccine production. Even if we did, we do not have bottle, we don't have packaging, we don't have shipping uh, capabilities in Canada. So it is really unfortunate. And those countries who have really invested heavily, um, and they are really milking it. And, you know, for every vaccine a project to establish, you will need close to almost a billion dollar. So yeah. billion dollar investments. Canada is already on all $340 billion deficit. Yeah. You can't really think about government thinking about doing something. <clears throat> but, you know, we got to learn the lesson from history. We got to learn the lesson. And then no matter what happens, I mean, a uh, hundred billion dollar for federal government, you know, they collect so much tax from us. It's not such a big deal. But I think, you know, it, everybody is in it for themselves. We need to really put pressure on governments that this is a wake up call. Um, and we have already suffered enormously. And I think it is time that we start really thinking about it seriously. Yeah, so much information you have given in such a nice way, Dr. Say, yeah. because um, I think people have to understand all this. And um, and those people who don't want to get vaccinated, they should be, there should be some rules for that because those will be the people who will get infected and they will give it out to others uh, if they don't get into this. That's really great point. So thanks for reminding me. You know, yeah. I've been watching um, these conspiracy theories that really got yeah. me angry. Um, and what happened was, that I think um, about 25 or 30 years ago, an, an, an individual who, um, let me share my screen because I think you will get a, a good kick out of this. Okay. Um, so the, the idea really there was um, people, um, you know, um, will always ask the question. And so it was being a hammer of who was giving a presentation to NIH. And during that um, kind of uh, presentation to National Institute of Health in the United States, 
he came across a large sample data um, from people and they were doing this analysis, genetic analysis for some one particular reason. Um, and the, he found that people who were really religious or were inclined towards God or they were passionate about God and have faith and religious feeling, they all showed what we call vesicular um, bioamine um, uh, VMAT gene to be um, a really uh, an upregulated in them. So he proposed to then the government and everybody that these you know so-called terrorists who are running around and they are religious fanatics. We have the ability to really take them out, not you know through bombing them or gunning them, but if we could somehow knock out this God gene. And the Time magazine published it as the God gene, that there is a gene that makes us specifically you know, oriented towards God. So we met Gene, he said that if we could knock it out, so somebody asked him a question, and, and I think it could probably, it was a, a, you know, a, one of the individual who said that, well, how do we do this? How do we bell the cat? How are we going to give these people this particular um, what they call CRISPR, a small fragment of gene deletion scissor that goes in and cuts that gene off. How are we going to do this? He said, you know what? Everybody gets vaccinated. Why don't we put it in the vaccine? And then when vaccine is there, it will clip that gene off. And they said, well, then how would we know that it has done the job and the collateral damage? So they said, we will produce or, you know, and make these little capsules, and they call them the radio frequency identifier. And I think this is what North America will also apply to identify people who have been vaccinated. So this little capsule will not only have the vaccine, but it also the vaccine is delivered now through small nanoparticles. But once it's in there, this particular gadget will allow us to be able to identify as to which particular person has been vaccinated. So they said, you know what, we could give them vaccine, but in that vaccine, we will also deliver these nasty, um, you know, um, uh, kind of a clippers that will go quietly and cut their God gene out. <laughs> that was really a crazy idea yeah. uh, to do this. And so this particular uh, radio frequency identifier, it's really not that hard to implant. Um, we could do this. And in you know, in Scandinavian countries, there are more than 40,000 people who have this. So this could contain all your credit card information, your passport information and everything else. But it also becomes an identifier whether an ind individual has been vaccinated or not. So, you know, this could come in between your finger and, and it is, um, you know, you could go in just like you uh, kind of tap your um, in a credit card onto the machine and it, it just causes your deb debit or credit card payments to go through. So it needs a really a little transponder which can read um, this individual's information. Um, and, and this is what will really cause um, uh, people to identify if someone has been vaccinated or not to prevent the spread of the but what this does is that this became a conspiracy theory in our countries that Bill Gates um, who is very high on vaccines um, is really um, specifically targeting our people to knock out their <laughs> knock out their gene in the brain and make it really make us godless. So um, and then here in North America, there are other anti-vaxxers. They think that these vaccines, you know, cause autism spectrum yeah. these vaccine. And of course, each and every vaccine has a 50 nanograms of mercury that it actually causes um um, um, autism damages our brain and causes all kinds of other issues. So I think we are, you know, fighting this battle at so many different fronts that even if we get these vaccines, there will still be people who do not want to actually have themselves inoculated. And so you are in constant, um, you know, um, in a kind of a rut. So even if you get vaccinated, you have the antibodies, we don't know how long they're going to last. Yeah. And this COVID comes back in a vicious cycle, and then the cycle repeats itself. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all the information. We can go on, but unfortunately. Um, yeah, yeah, so just if I'm a minister, Dr. Navi. Yeah. Uh, so, so, you know, we had a SARS in the 2004. 
So Toronto was locked down, as you know, in 2004, like it was a China and everything. Now we are 2020. So of course, our government, our our MLAs, our leaders, they didn't learn anything what's going on. So do you think, you know, because if you look at the MLAs, they are either bankers, investors, or big shots. They are, they are no scientists in this. Is that you, do you think we need kind of, we need change of our leadership, like in our house, you think? So then they know like how, like how important it is. July, I think you hit the really uh, yeah. nail on its head. It's really so important. You know, the moment, um, you know, um, the vaccine company announced that it has got a vaccine, its share jumped almost 30%, right? So this is where these guys are investing and they're thinking they're all good, well-meaning. I wouldn't say that, you know, our politicians are heartless or consciousless, but, you know, their their mandate is so limited and they have to plan three years, four year cycles. So I think this is not just the job of politicians alone. It is really a, a community, a country, a nation has to come together to be able yeah. to, do, you know, come up with initiatives. And if every Canadian said, you know, I'm willing to give $100 for us, let's do this. I think we will do this. And then, yeah. you know, what happens is that it costs about close to a billion dollar to build a very credible, uh, you know, um, facility. But what happens is that for most third world countries, um, you know, most of the cost of these vaccines, because they cannot afford, is subsidized by World Health Organization. So WHO will subsidize it. So I was talking, send, I sent a letter to Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan, when he was elected. And I said to him, look, you know, you don't have any vaccine production. You don't have any plan. And, um, you know, when your per capita income goes $500 above, then WHO will not provide you subsidized because you are you are khud kafil. You know, you can take care of yourself. And so, you know, and that means that right now, country like Pakistan, $1.2 billion is given through, uh, you know, World Health Organization to offset the cost of vaccine. But if Pakistan, which is doing economically well, it will. So I told the politicians, and since you started a politician, <laughs> I said to them, you know, um, this is what will happen. For God's sake, put your actings in plan now. And he said, what did you say? I said $500 per capita per individual. And, and you are very close to it. It says, oh, we will no, never let this happen. <laughs> we will not let per capita income go higher than this, what it is. So, uh, so I think, you know, uh, politicians are short-sighted in, in that way. But, yeah. you know, uh, it's not really, it's not the time to point fingers. They're doing their best. Everybody's doing their best. Our government yeah. has really come forth and to support people who are struggling. And Canada has done wonderfully, wonderfully well. I think our country, our nation, we stayed put together, united. So it is now, we got to deal with it now by, you know, social distancing and, and you know, kind of cutting the chain of spread. But then yeah. what happens is once it's done and dealt, we should sit together as a nation. We are very proud people. We are great countries, one of the greatest countries. We live in the best city, in the best province, the best country. We need to really put our efforts together, not point fingers, not blame one or the other. Say it's our national um, pride. We will get this done, and yeah. we will get this done. Yeah, inshallah. Definitely. Yeah, inshallah. That's right, yeah, Thank you so, so much. Doctor, yeah, doctor, we'll, so we'll get you uh, back again soon. Yeah. Once the vaccination is here in Canada, so it you know it's going to be probably like side effects probably and will be you know basically. So we'll be talking to you again, inshallah, very yeah. soon, Dr. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your information, always, knowledge. Always, I yeah. am your humble servant. Always a pleasure. Oh, no, no. Thank you so much. Thank you. All Thank the you. Best. Take, Take care. All and be safe. Stay safe. Okay. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Right, guys, one and oh, only wow. Dr. Navid Sayyid. I wow. think this, this should run on our Salam Namaste and Coffee with Jalal. All the information he gave them, people should understand that. You know, there's so much information and uh -huh. all of them are valid.